This is a common carp. Well-known fact in the fly fishing world that carp love to take a fly. These voracious eaters can be found throughout the world and grow to massive proportions. If you can't tell, I love to catch them on my fly rod. Okay, I think you get the picture. You can catch carp on a fly. Specifically, this fly. The Double Trouble Carp Fly. This is a larva lace original that imitates a variety of invertebrates, vertebrates, and crustaceans. The key identifier being a double hook shank with a super flat profile and buggy exterior. Traditional double salmon fly hooks like Cellar double hooks work great for this task. But if you don't have a double hook, don't worry. Grab a treble hook from one of your old spin fishing lures. This one's from an old jerk bait. Notice how one of these hooks is not like the other two. It's an oddball in its orientation. Our goal is to have the hook eye flat with two hook points riding up, just like this. We need to remove that bottom hook, so place it deep in the cutters of some strong needle nose pliers. Be sure the entire hook is within the cutters and cover it with a towel to prevent flying hook points. Squeeze those pliers until you hear a loud snap. Remove the towel to find a near perfect double hook shank and one oddball hook point all by its lonesome. Then you can secure the hook in the jaws of your vise. Look ma, no barbs. Rotate your vise to allow the will be bottom of the hook to face up. Get a good base of thread down ending just behind the eye. Speaking of eyes, Larva Lace manufactures their own brass dumbbell style eyes. They have high quality bead chain too. Either will work for the double trouble, but I'm going to use bead chain in a medium size. Clip off a section or two with your cutters. Add a drop of super glue to the thread just behind the eye. These eyes will fit snugly over the small mound that remains from the old hook. Grip the chain closest to you and hold it over the hook just behind the eye. Grab it with a wrap or two of thread before figurating to set it in place. Bring your thread back before adding a piece of pearl or olive crystal mirror flash. Wrap the flash around your thread and zip line it down to your hook before securing it with over wraps. Next, reach for a pack of spotted legs. I prefer these to normal barred legs because of the more random, natural looking patterns. Grab two legs from the pack and tie them over your flash. Trim them to be just longer than the tail fibers. For the tail, we're going to use two colors of strung marabou feathers. Stroke the feathers from the bottom of the point to gather a small bunch. Use water or saliva to tame these wild fibers before trimming to the desired length, about one and a half times the hook shank or shorter. Use care when securing these fibers to your hook so not to snip your thread on the double hook points that are still prominently protruding below. Use your thumb to flatten out these fibers and make them splay out in the back. Now we're going to sandwich the olive marabou in between two bundles of black feathers. Repeat the marabou prep process for the top and get it tied in. For me, it's easier to invert the hook before repeating the process on the other side. You should end up with a beautiful two-tone tail with a little flash and a lot of movement. Next, reach for a mini hackle pack and pluck a brown or black feather from the cape. Prepare this feather like you would a soft hackle, wetting your fingers and stroking all the fibers back from the tip down. Tie the tip in on top of the fly with a shiny side of the feather facing you. Then dub a thin noodle of Salmo Supreme after midnight dubbing and make consecutive wraps all the way up to behind the bead chain. Tease out the dubbing with a brush if you'd like. Carefully palmer the hackle forward using your fingers to stroke back the fibers during each turn. Watch those double hooks though. Capture the hackle behind the bead chain eyes and trim the excess stem. I prefer to cut the fibers from what will be the bottom part of the fly as well to ensure a super low profile and maximum balance in moving water. 
Finally, I like to add a small hot spot at the front of this fly. Purple Peril dubbing does it very well for me. Dub a four inch noodle and take three wraps behind the bead chain before going over the top towards the front and over the top towards the back. Finish by wrapping in front of the bead chain eyes and whip finish to make it final. A dab of super glue is always a good idea for maximum durability. The Double Trouble has become one of my favorite carp flies because it works early in the season, smack dab in the middle of summer, and late into the fall months. Tie some up in various colors today and give those soft lip sassy carp something to think about on your next outing. Be sure to ask your local fly shop about Larva Lace products and visit HagensFish.com for more information and tying videos. Email Lori if you need help finding the perfect Larva Lace products to fill your fly box with fish catching machines. Until next time, tight lines and best fishes from Larva Lace.